So, you want to run Curse of Strahd, but don't have time to read the book or never learn to read in the first place. Well, then let me explain Curse of Strahd as quickly as I can. Spoilers, obviously. Chapter 1. Into the Mists. Curse of Strahd, of course, revolves around a guy named Strahd whose dad died in a war, then named a castle after his dead mom, then his crowning achievement was becoming a simp so powerful that he killed his brother and was exiled to his own demiplane. Now he sits around waiting for his dead brother's dead girlfriend to be reborn so he can ask her to dinner and destroy her entire village when she oh, says God. no. The goal of the adventure is to meander around enough to collect all three pieces of Barovian Exodia and use them to banish Strahd to the Shadow Realm. This includes Strahd's old diary, a lightsaber, and a spray bottle against cats, except it's a medallion and it's for vampires. But how do you get there in the first place, you ask, you undefined amorphous this person? Well, there are a few options and none of them are being born in Barovia, because no one in Barovia has enough game to get that done. Even Strahd can barely get anyone to come over to his house unless he charms them with magic or sends a bunch of monsters to drag them there. So instead, the module starts when a party of adventurers gets sucked into the mists of Barovia like an MLM sucks in suburban moms. But hey, if that's not enough backstory for you, the party could be led into these mists by a fake letter written by Strahd to capture more people into his centuries old sleepover, follow a fortune teller that forgets to mention that the terms and conditions of the journey include being trapped forever, or the party was just chasing some furries into the woods. Also, there's eight pages to tell you about a card reading you should do before the adventure that won't matter since you'll be redoing the card reading during the adventure. Chapter 2 the lands of Barovia. Barovia is a sad spooky place, but not like Halloween spooky, more like eternal damnation existential dread spooky. The random encounters include ravens, dogs, and some people that just want to have a good time before selling them out to their boss. The land of Barovia is small, allowing your player characters to easily sprint in fear from town to town in just a few hours. While running, they'll encounter a bunch of places we'll discuss later and one we'll discuss right now, so sit down. The Sarpu encampment is a hangout place for the Vistani and more specifically, Madam Eva, an old woman that wants you to believe in the heart of the cards. When the player characters enter her tent, she'll begin the card reading to tell them where all the plot coupons have been randomly placed. Hopefully they don't all turn out to be inside Strahd's castle because then this might be a very short adventure. Chapter 3 The Village of Barovia this is Sad Town, population rats, basement dwelling vampire spawn, an old woman that sells drug pies and one plot hook barely holding everything together. Enjoy an awkward burial where you don't know the guy that died or anyone else at the funeral. At least player characters can buy adventuring equipment at Barrel Giraffe's Mercantile for prices so extremely high you start to understand why people in the real world think monopolies are a bad idea. Chapter 4, Castle Ravenloft. If you walk up the road, you'll find a nice carriage that'll roll you directly to your second TPK inside Strahd's fuck-off castle. This castle has a layout no one could live in, so no one living does. The maps alone take up five pages, and the kitchen is seven rooms and a staircase away from the dining hall, so all the food is cold by the time anyone gets around to needing a meal. Chapter 5 the town of Vileki. A town where everyone is happy, but no one is happy. The mayor's son can teleport you to the afterlife. An imp is the seventh wonder of the world. There is a guy that makes toys for kids, and a guy named Isaac that has toys that you don't want anywhere near kids. Also, some nice bones were stolen a few days ago and are among the third TPK of the campaign. But at least this one happens in a coffin maker shop so they won't have to move the bodies too far. Chapter 6 Old Bone Grinder. A nice broken windmill with a name so obviously evil that everyone will come here looking for a fight. The grandmas inside have a nice assortment of pastries, baking ingredients, and children in cages, much like a French bakery if it had American foreign policies. Chapter 7 Argen Vost Holt. A mansion filled with knights too angry to die but too apathetic to pick up a broom and clean the place up. The only way to get them to finally move out of their dragon dad's house is to drag a skull halfway across Barovia so their dragon dad can become a giant lava lamp. Chapter 8 The Village of Kretsk. A hippie paradise commune that won't let visitors in unless they have barrels of wine or have a dead PC the DM really needs to resurrect to get this campaign back on track. There's a pool that gives a good ending to the video game if you brought the right NPC and exhausted their dialogue tree, and an abbey on the hill filled with people made by clicking randomize and sims but only if you downloaded all the animal DLC packs. There's a nice man in that abbey that can bring someone back to life but only if you bring him a dress so he can reenact a terrible version of Beauty and the Beast that is still better than the live action remake. Chapter 9 Slonaka Pass this cold mountain road demands you walk through fire or stone demons get big mad, followed by a big fuck-off bird telling you to fuck off, followed by a much smaller fuck-off goat that will be killed before it can properly articulate how much it wants you to fuck off. Chapter 10. The Ruins of Beres. A town where Strahd got the hots for a lady and the mayor thought that was weird so he staked her in the heart and Strahd thought that was weird so he flooded the town and made a statue. Now Strahd's hag mom hangs out here in her chicken walker and flies around in a skull like a low-tech prophet from Halo. Chapter 11, Von Richten's Tower. This was once a wizard's tower, but he died. So then it was a vampire hunter's tower, but he left. Now it's a different vampire hunter's tower, but she's not here right now. Can you leave a message? Feel free to pass the time while you wait for her to return by playing in the wagon that explodes and kills you, playing in the tower that electrocutes and kills you, or just sitting around until a group of werewolves shows up, annoyed someone hasn't died here yet. Chapter 12, The Wizards of Wine. 
the source of alcohol for the entire region and is made with three magic gems. At least it was until Strahd's hag mom and the local forest rangers came by and took the two wine gems. But what about the third one, you may ask? The module answers, what? Oh, that one. It was taken by, uh, someone, maybe. I don't know. I'm tired. Stop asking. Here, have 30 angry stick bundles. Now leave me alone. Chapter 13. The Amber Temple. A place that once contained ancient evil vestiges now contains one less evil ancient vestige and a lot more flaming dead wizard skulls. Alongside all the skulls is a smart dog and a statue who is not a good boy, a lich with dementia, a burn victim, and a gummy bear golem that is angry to see anyone. If you somehow get past all of that, you're going to have to talk to a bunch of sarcophagi that hope you'll choose them on this season of the Barovian Bachelorette. Chapter 14, Yester Hill. The location of the fourth TPK of the campaign, with a map so big that giants would have trouble filling out the square. A bunch of druids and axemen sleep in the graves, cause this is gothic horror, damn it. If you sit around long enough, Strahd will ride up to get the plot rolling again, and a medieval rave will commence. Strahd watches these murder hippies dance around a statue of him held by an emo tree's roots until the statue feels a bit too awkward about all the attention and wanders off. Strahd then starts to feel awkward too and demands everyone leave his room, even though this is in fact not his room, so he can stare longingly at some mist and reminisce about his childhood. Chapter 15, Werewolf Den. Exactly what it says on the box. Den filled with werewolves, with the occasional child fight club sprinkled in. If that's not enough for you, wait around and even more werewolves will show up so you can fight werewolves after fighting other werewolves. Epilogue. Once your party has run around Barovia and collected all the pieces of Exodia, it is time for them to fight Strahd or die to him, whatever comes first. If Strahd dies, congratulations, your prize is nothing, as Strahd just spawns back in a few months later, wondering why he was disconnected from the server. If Strahd instead kills everyone because they stopped being cool toys for his eternal house arrest, then he's free to follow around his beloved Tatiana's reincarnation until she dies and he has to mope for 30 years for her to come back. Appendix A, Character Options. This section lets a player be a character with an even more traumatic than usual backstory. Also, here's some stuff I found in Strahd's couch. Appendix B, Death House. The location of the first TPK of the campaign with nothing going on for the first few floors and far too much going on in the last two. Feel free to choose whether you want the TPK to happen when an angry nurse shows up, or a character touches an art exhibit that a bunch of shadows really don't want them to touch, or the shambling man in the basement doesn't get its blood sacrifice. If none of those are to your liking, just have the house kill everyone instead. Because why start the adventure in Death House when you could just end the adventure in Death House and go play Call of Cthulhu instead?